Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 6th of August, 2021. Hope you had a good week in the market. Uh, you basically uh, would have been difficult unless you were long oil uh, bonds or the volatility index because everything else was higher this week. And in fact, the S&P 500 closed at a new all-time high. We saw that it came down to the rising 20-day moving average in this prior resistance uh, early in the week and then got a nice bounce from there. And today we broke uh, past this little band of resistance here going into next week i think that we want to ideally see this level hold but if not then we'll continue to keep an eye on that rising five-day moving average as well as uh which this uh blue line is the week to date and also of course because we began a new month on monday the month to date volume weighted average price we'll keep an eye on those two levels the nasdaq uh, broke to a new all-time high on Thursday, but pulled back just slightly here today. So looking at the 30 minute time frame, here's what we saw this week. We saw that the volume weighted average price off of the uh, July low, gap lower uh, had held as uh, a place where buyers had shown up late in July. And then once again this week, that's exactly where the buyers came in and rescued this market from uh, making lower highs and lower lows below a five-day moving average. So going into next week, I think that, uh, again, the month to date volume weighted average price and the five-day moving average will be levels to keep an eye on, as well as this volume weighted average price if we do see prices uh, pull back deeper. The Russell 2000 also came down to its volume weighted average price from that uh, uh, late uh, or mid-July low and recovered from there. Now, on the daily time frame, we're still, we're right at that 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is completely flat. Uh, so we're in the upper half of the range that we've been in almost all year. And realistically, on a 15-minute time frame, you look at this, or actually, let's just look at the 30-minute time frame. You know, we just had a decent little rally to get up here. We pulled back. If we can consolidate maybe another day, two, three, days uh, next week it might give us a, uh, a good higher low to measure risk against if it does in fact get moving higher and perhaps back up towards the high end of the uh, range that we've been in this year semiconductors had a great week uh, you know last week we saw they pulled right back to that rising 50-day moving average as we wanted them to and we've seen a relentless bounce from there it slowed down just a little bit today but still hold that month holding that month to date volume weighted average price and the rising five day moving average. If we were to see a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below that five day moving average, I think you would want to keep an eye on the next important volume weighted average price level, which is anchored off of this low right here from July 27th. That would bring us down into this prior band of resistance as well. So we saw that this had been a previous important level. If we pull back down, that's where I think we're likely to see buyers would emerge to, uh, you know, again, defend the, uh, the, the market. Uh, the, the strength in the semiconductors that is biotechs made their new all-time high here uh, and as we often see the people who chase the breakouts the next day they uh, see that uh, you know they get sold into because the market was extended when it gets there and once again I want to point out you know there's two different big uh, yeah, it's, um, biotech uh, ETFs this is the IBB it's the one I've always followed and the other one is the XBI IBB clear uptrend XBI neutral at best. Always, you know, base your analysis on what you're trading, not the relationships or anything else. If you're trading stocks and uptrends, you trade them to the long side. If you're trading stocks and downtrends, trade them to the short side or avoid them. Uh, the financials had a good day. They finally made it past this little range. This is something I was telling Alpha Trend subscribers uh, that we were looking for that possibility. This is what I'd sketched in that I would have liked to see. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't much of an opportunity to get involved unless you bought, uh, you know, beyond that gap there today. But I think that the financials uh, clearly look like they're headed towards new all-time highs here as well. So keep an eye on them for strength in the coming days and actually weeks because here we are still in a primary uh, longer term uptrend after that nice consolidation. Let's talk about Bitcoin for a moment. Uh, if you'd seen my Twitter, uh, well, hold on one sec. That's what I was looking for. Uh, I had drawn this in uh, earlier in the week uh, that Bitcoin had gotten up to the conjunction of the volume weighted average price from the all time high, as well as the year to date volume weighted average price. I was looking for, as I said here, uh, ideally we would see a pullback 
down towards this volume weighted average price from the low and then continue higher and that's basically pretty much exactly what we did we pulled back from that volume weighted average price down to the volume weighted average price from the low and we have rocketed higher since then so buyers really look like they're gaining that uh, upper uh, hand once again in the in uh, Bitcoin Ideally, it might settle down in here a little bit, but if we were to take a look at the measured move, we could say, you know, if we called this 30,000 up to 40, 42,000, and then this low at 38, we would add uh, 12,000 to 38, giving us a price objective of about 50,000 for this move. And that's where we had some prior support. So looks like buyers are, uh, you know, finally regaining some control in the uh, the trend of, of uh, Bitcoin. That's not the only uh, group or, or you know sec area that did well uh, based around the volume weighted average price. I had pointed out uh, uh, post earnings that uh, the volume weighted average price in Roku was going to be important. It came right down to that volume weighted average price. The year to date volume weighted average price is what I was saying. And you could see that you know this had been prior resistance turned into support here. Now, I don't really love Roku here because it got stuck below the week to date, month to date volume weighted average price, and it's still below the declining five day moving average, but it did bounce basically where it was supposed to, as did Robinhood. I don't know if you saw that tweet on uh, Thursday, uh, right before the close, I had pointed out that we came down to the volume weighted average price from the IPO. That's this purple one right here. This morning we had a bounce right up to the week to date volume weighted average price as well, and then it pulled back. So if you're not using the volume weighted average price, there's opportunities all over the place to really be looking at them if you understand how to do it. That's going to uh, do it for me. I'll talk about some other stocks uh, maybe over the weekend. Uh, have a good weekend and thanks for tuning in.